Hey, Cryptozens. Tonight's show. Who bought the dip, Anon? Tether survives DDoS attack. BIS launches Market Intel Platform and a new segment, Crypto Job Watch. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is June 19th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. So take a minute, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now. Because we're here at 10 p.m. each and every night so that when you leave in the morning, you're taking with you the crypto news analysis that you need to start your day. Keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. So I've been looking at the charts and it's clear something has happened. Because Bitcoin is up like 9% on the day as I'm looking at it. And it's not just Bitcoin. We've got Ethereum sitting at 14% gained in 24 hours. Matic is up 10%. Even Luna 2.0 is up 12%. So there was a dip and it did get bought. I just want to know who. Maybe shake their hands and say thank you. Now to be fair, Paul Krugman might be right. He doesn't think that this is signs of a recovery says it's not time to get your hopes up yet. No, the Nobel Prize winning economist uh, thinks this is all sizzle and no meat. He tweeted, quote, As of this morning, Bitcoin is experiencing a modest rally, probably just a dead crypto bounce. But anyway, I thought some history might be relevant. And he promises to write more on the compare and contrast between the dot-com bubble and crypto. So, yeah. Maybe it's a dead cat bounce. Tex hates that phrase, by the way. Dead dog bounce seems more alliterative. But anyway, we're not focusing on that. Whether it's a big rally or a head fake, I want to see who bought the dip. Now, Binance, I know Binance bought the dip. In this case, really, the dip started in the dead of night on the 18th of June. For me, anyway. Because that was approximately when 3AC got liquidated. A bunch of crypto got into the system in an attempt to keep something pegged. You know, Justin Sun, he threw a lot of money at USDD trying to keep it on its peg, which isn't working. At one point this morning, it was down to 94 cents per USDD, which is not what you want to see out of a stable coin that's denominated in US dollars. So we've had round and round of crypto dumping, whether it's normal FUD or whether it's from serious concerns or whether it's just an attempt to push the liquidation price down. Bitcoin and ETH especially have been getting dumped on the market. Yeah, somehow, somehow, Celsius hasn't been liquidated. Not yet. They sold and they borrowed and they got enough capital together to push their liquidation price down enough so that they could stay afloat. The price of Bitcoin plunged down to 17930 which is the lowest it has been since December of 2020. Now, since then, it has come back and it has reclaimed the 20K mark. So Binance bought some of that. Aren't open ledgers fun? We can see who has the conviction of their words. Anyway, they used a cold storage wallet for the transaction. Right about the time that Bitcoin was hitting its lowest, they bought 101,266 Bitcoin. That wallet itself is holding over 350,000 Bitcoin, which gives it a a value of around $7 billion. That wallet, by the way, by itself, it is holding nearly 2% of all Bitcoin ever mined. This isn't their first time at this, though. Not at Binance. Binance thought that they were buying the dip before. You know that meme about, did you buy the dip? Oh, you did? Did you buy the dip of the dip of the dip of the dip of the dip? Yeah, kind of like that. Last January, Binance bought a bunch of Bitcoin at the 43,000 range. Now, Elon Musk, he bought the dip. We know he did. He tweeted it out yesterday, June 18th. He said, quote, I will keep supporting Dogecoin. And then Altcoin Gordon, he came in and said, basically, we'll keep buying it then. To which Elon replied, I am. Now, he made that tweet yesterday, and as we do here, let's take a look at the numbers. At the time of writing, Dogecoin is sitting at $0.06 each. 
Now, a minute, one minute before Musk tweeted that out, Dogecoin was sitting at just over 5.2 cents each. So that's quite an improvement. Market cap is just under $8 billion. Fully diluted market cap is about the same, of course. Now, both scores are up. Market cap has gone up 12.61% in 24 hours. So that's a lot of influx in capital. Capital and hope. Trading volume is up 78% in 24 hours. Now, we'll see if Musk gets himself in trouble with those tweets. Because right now, right now, he is getting sued for doing exactly what he just did. He's being sued for promoting Dogecoin. And not only is he being sued for promoting Dogecoin, They want to block him and his companies from ever promoting Dogecoin again in the future. Here's what I got to say. Joke about Dogecoin all you want, but right now, it's number 10 in terms of market cap. Did you buy the dipping on? Did you? At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $887.32 billion. It's up 5.48% in 24 hours. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up 6.15%, Ethereum up 9.97%, Tether, we're going to talk about them here in just a minute, USDC and Binance Coin up 6.96%. Paulo Arduino is Tether's chief technical officer. Now He confirmed that a DDoS attack on their website, tether.io. This attack was early on Saturday morning, and traffic shot up from a typical 2,000 to 8 million hits in five minutes. That's a 400,000% increase. I'd like my portfolio to do that. Anyway, Arduino confirmed that it was over. He declared that the attack had been mitigated. That said, they're not relaxing. He said that they were, quote, leaving the I'm under attack mode enabled. And he said the additional security won't hamper things. He said that they would, quote, won't affect the ability of redeeming, which is pretty important to their business model. So a DDoS attack or denial of service attack is where you bombard someone's servers. The idea is to flood the server to the point it just can't handle all the requests that people are making of it. So then something happens. Either the server dies or they trick it into gaining access somehow. At this point, it's hard to say what the attacker's goals were. Now, this I'm under attack mode that Arduino is talking about is actually pretty simple. You've probably seen it before. In this case, it comes from Cloudflare's DNS management service, and it's a way to deflect DDoS attacks by requiring users or their machines to complete some extra steps to get to the website. See, when you go to tether.io, it says checking your browser before it sends you to the website. What's happening is that the website is sending a JavaScript challenge to your browser. I don't know what this specific challenge is in this case, but if the challenge fails, then that's when something happens. That's when a human has to come in and take a step or two, complete a capture challenge or something similar. That puts all of the stress, all the DDoS activity on Cloudflare's servers, not Tether's. He did note that, quote, it takes a bit of time for the auto scale to adjust. Let's take a look at the numbers. So last month, after all of that mess with Terra Luna's Black Swan event, Tether had had a all-time high of $83.2 billion in terms of market cap. Well, that dropped. After Tether got briefly depegged, it slid to $75 billion. Now, looking at the numbers here, Tether is sitting at a market cap of $68 billion. That's an 18% drop. Tether lost 0.11% market cap since the DDoS attack. Now, the last 24 hours have seen a 4% decline in active addresses that are trading Tether. Transaction volume is down 80% in a day. $1 billion in transaction volume instead of 5 the global NFT market cap is up over $12.26 billion. Sales volume is down 1.75% in 24 hours. According to Coin Market Cap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are CryptoPunks, followed by Bored Apes, Sneakerheads, 
Other Deed, and Mutant Apes. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. The Bank for International Settlements, or BIS, they have a subunit, the Innovation Hub. And the Innovation Hub are the ones who made the announcement. They announced the launch of new projects. These projects are focused on various aspects of both traditional and cryptocurrency payments. In that list of products, you will find security for retail CDBCs, central bank digital currencies. You'll also find a crypto market intelligence platform, and that's what we're looking at here today. So this market intelligence platform is going to be launched under the Eurosystem Center Initiative. And if you're asking yourself why they would need such a thing, just look around. Terra Luna, USDD still falling off its peg. 3AC getting liquidated. Celsius is burning capital and selling assets left and right, trying to avoid liquidation. Between failing stablecoins and failing DeFi lending products, the market looks like a great big mess. Their official announcement said, quote, The project's goal is to create an open source market intelligence platform to shed light on market capitalizations, economic activity, and risks to financial stability. This isn't their normal way. It's not typically how the Bank for International Settlements does things. Usually, they rely on self-reporting. Self-reporting coming from unregulated firms that are providing data on things like asset backing and trade volumes and market caps. Another thing that the Eurosystem Center is looking at is quantum computing. If you're in crypto and you don't know the dangers that are presented by quantum computing, you need to read up on it. With all of that computing horsepower, it seriously jeopardizes cryptocurrency, at least the proof-of-work chains anyway. So they're intending to test different cryptographic solutions. They're looking at how changing the cryptography to be quantum-resistant, how is that going to impact performance? They said, quote, Quantum computers may be capable of breaking the cryptography used by central banks and the private financial sector to secure payment and settlement systems. This threatens confidentiality and could undermine the integrity of payment systems. Given the long-term sensitivity of financial data, this vulnerability must be addressed well in advance of the advent of quantum computing. Now, the bank's SELA initiative is a new thing. It's all about CDBCs. They're going to be looking at solutions to allow CDBC issuance through intermediaries and you still have to maintain security and low costs. They described it as, quote, SELA will explore technological solutions to allow intermediaries to provide CDBCs to users without the related financial exposure, reducing risks and costs in the process, combined with a strong focus on cybersecurity. Now, their third project, Genesis, is focused on the environment. This project is expected to help close the data gaps and inconsistencies in data collection for climate sustainability. I guess right now you've got central banks all over the world that are looking at how climate change is going to affect things like inflation and financial stability. They said, quote, this project aims to build an open source database of corporate reports coupled with a full text search engine to identify sustainability related disclosures. Machine learning and natural language processing tools will then be used to organize and structure this data. So I want to introduce a new segment tonight. If you guys like it, I'll keep doing it. It's called Crypto Job Watch. And this idea came to me after doing story after story about this project or that exchange, laying off tens, hundreds, and thousands of people. People need hope, but people also need help. So that's my intent. I want to highlight one job per night in the crypto industry. I don't know these companies. I don't work for any of these companies. I don't know anyone who works for any of these companies. So I'm not endorsing a job. I'm not endorsing a company. I'm just offering a little help for someone who might need it. So first up, this company's name is Smart Karma. They are looking for an independent cryptocurrency research analyst. And for that position, they're offering ninety dollars to $115,000 per year. It is a remote job. Smart Karma is a research company. They provide independent research analysts. Clients pay a subscription fee. 
and that fee gives them access to their investment research and insights. These are stored on their cloud platform. In the job itself, the qualifications are eight plus years of providing extensive research or investment experience to institutional clients. That's the big one, the eight years. Beyond that, they're looking for crypto specialists with crypto investment analysis experience, and they want someone with the ability to write differentiated insights. If this sounds like you, you have to go to their website to apply. Their website is smartkarma.com, and when you get there, go all the way to the bottom for the careers link. That'll get you started. And that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed tonight's show, like, comment, and subscribe. Give us a glowing review because that helps other people find their way to this podcast. Do you have questions or comments? Reach out and let us know. The email address is nick at cryptoovernighter.com. That's nick at cryptoovernighter.com. Or come find us on YouTube. Leave me a comment and maybe I'll read it into the next episode. Now you stay safe out there. You watch out for yourselves, but watch out for each other too. We'll see you tomorrow night.